Hey everyone, so today we have Gundam Converge EX05, it's called Musha Gundam, and it came out in 2015. Let's see, anything special here, we got some cool promo images, Oh, the shield can actually open like a bird, or be a separate piece entirely. Alright, some extra weapons, and there's also a different, I might have to get that later. Alright, here's a fandom as usual, so Mo Musha Gundam is from a Plamo Kyoshiro, which I think we're like, maybe it's a deformed uh, series. So SD, super deformed, Musha, uh, but they have made realistic looking ones, which like that character drawing there. Uh, let's see, I remember I built a Master Grade version of this a long time ago, and it was awesome. It had a crazy knee, you know, those molded as one piece like one molding but you cut it in certain places and it became a functional knee which is really cool for its time alright so let's see it looks like a RX-78 but obviously looks like a samurai and then interesting note is since it's a SD Gundam it's a living mobile suit and somehow has no pilot because it's a living suit alright apologize for the advertisements nothing's for free in this internet Let's go into this thing. So we got two baggies here. Ooh, look at that gum. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. The weapons. Weapons in a sheath. Empty sheath. And an old school like flintlock gun it looks like. This one's all about the robot. And it's gonna have the lame foot stand, which I never use. Yeah, I don't use those foot stands. Let's break this apart. So, yeah, make sure the joints are loose. All right, bottom of the foot details look pretty good. It's a uh, matte red. Yeah, that's actually a really nice foot. And then we up here we have black, and then a gold ankle uh, armor. Some bolt details or something there, and some greebly effects or grooves, necks and crannies. The knees have just yellow domes on uh, gold domes on them. The shins have some. No, it's different on the inside. Kind of plain on the inside, which is fine. But the outside has this armor piece, which looks pretty nice. And then the leg is black, but then the upper leg is white. There's a joint. We have this like samurai kind of armor look to it. I wonder if those are beam saber handles in there. The chest is black, but you can see nice red here in the venting. Maybe that's a hatch to get in. Oh, but there is no cockpit. Never mind. It's a sentient robot. There's that motif there coming across here in the back also. So very nice. The ankles come across on both sides with this gold. And then this backpack is a different gray. It's like a lighter gray. This is more black. Gold up here as well. The backpack is glued in place. Some peg holes. Two little thrusters it looks like. That's really neat. This, I'm, I'm glad I opened this. Uh, it's been sitting in my box for a while waiting to be reviewed. So black arms primarily, but we have some gold in the back of the hand is gold as well, and it can be removed. Get the scissors out of there. And so we have a cool, you know, samurai kind of armor with some gold details there. Oh, only on the front though. So they save some money by not printing on the back. Yeah, it's kind of weak though. I kind of wish that was printed there, because you'll never. It's going to be really hard to match that gold, you know. You'd probably have to repaint all the gold pieces. So I'd rather have actually one less piece of weaponry, or really that stupid footstand. They shouldn't have had the footstand and then just painted that gold. Alright, so this can hold a, a weapon, which is great. Well, it seems like the majority of times, uh, the left arm can't hold a weapon, but the right always does. And so this is pretty much a mirror image. Yeah, okay, yeah, some of that motif there as well. That rectangular armor detail. It's coming together nicely. We have definitely a samurai-esque head. Very neat. 
You can see the eyes are translucent yellow and there's a lot of molded details behind it like it's got digital eyes or something. You got these flared out red things with the uh, gold filigree work. Some, I think that's, uh, you know, I don't know. This is painted, but it might be a different, like, brown. I don't think it's black. I don't think it's red either. I think it's brown. Red chin, there's some red and black in here as well. There's some sort of clear. Oh, wait, is that paint? No, never mind. It's a metallic paint. It's kind of like a chartreuse color, like a lime green, a yellow green. And then uh, more of this Japanese detailing here, the armor details of old samurais. And then, so, you got some bolt marks for the antennae. Yeah, very neat. That's kind of a short peg. Might wanna, yeah, it's not tight either. You might want to glue that in place. And also, these tips will break off if you're not careful. It's rigid plastic. All right, let's see if we can get some side-to-side -side head movement here. Well, if it's not pushed all the way down, yes, you can. Let's push it all the way down and see what happens. It's kind of colliding with the shoulders of all things. Yeah, it, it is. The shoulders colliding quite a bit. All right, well, it's nice that you can have it look left, right, though. All right, so what do we have here? This giant wing shield. So, yeah, nice raised cross painted gold nicely. On the back, we have uh, some sort of white beak. It looks like there's a tiny cockpit or something there. And then uh, the pivot, and then two thrusters, and like uh, it looks like a falcon actually. Right? See? The tail of a falcon. That's really cool. <laughs> That's just a very unexpected. I just thought it was going to be a one-piece shield. I wasn't expecting this. Right? So, yeah, it can just be cruising along. I wonder if it has a stand now. Or can it sit? Oh, it looks like it has claws here, molded in. Maybe it's like a griffin or something. So it's really neat. I like it. So you can play with that. Now, the question is, how does it go on there? So we have this thing. And we have two of these things. Hmm. Let's first figure out these weapons here. So we have a nice, I think this is called a Nigata. A long handle with the blade on the end. Or a halberd, I guess, if you're not Japanese, right? I think the British would have called this a halberd. But correct me if I'm wrong. And it looks like this is like a dark brown. Just based on the fact that this is black, right? It, you can see it's a different color, which is nice. All right, so that's one that can go in there. And then if you want, you can put in this old school looking rifle. You know, it looks like a flintlock, but obviously it's a Gundam, so it's gonna have a laser rifle or something. Interesting. That's a very unique gun. What's really, hmm. The handle isn't really round, but these are clearly round holes. I think it's actually a circle with the flat sides. Alright, so, yeah, that's cool. You can raise that up you know, with both hands articulating. Yeah, that's cool. Very neat. Alright, so, there must be some pedicles I'm missing here. Yes. So, if you want, we're going to have to lose this for now. Here you can have uh, an empty scabbard. There's only one, it's not on this side, so the scabbard's only going to go on this side. Might be easier to do this, do it this way. You might want to add some black into that so it looks like it's hollow. What's kind of weird is the curvature is going the wrong way. Or this is just warped. Maybe it's supposed to be straight. But no, I have a feeling it's supposed to be curved, but I feel like it's supposed to be curved the other way. Right? It wouldn't make sense to pull this out. Yeah, but it is intentional, it looks like, because this is the one with the handle already attached. And it's, yeah, it's, it's pointed the wrong direction, I think. Okay, so, with the empty scabbard, that means you probably want to have this, the sword in this hand, as if it pulled it out of that thing. So, there we go. Yeah, very nice. It's a pretty good sword, you know, silver and gold and black handle. But yeah, I think if I'm going to max it out, 
I'm not going to pose it with this sword. I'm just going to leave this thing here to fill up that hole. Alright, put this back on. Uh, let's see, so now there's definitely a bag hole here. I'm trying to see if there's any others in the bottom of the arms, but no. see. First, if you wanted to, these these little round ones are meant to store a weapon on the back. So if you want to, right, have them hang out holding that. Or you could probably also just store that sword right on the back. Yeah, so that's smart that the peg hole is the same size. But, the question is, how do we get Mr. Eagle on this thing? Ah, I see. Hold on. Let's just show what's on the box, right? So let's put this whole shield thing in there. Obviously, you're not going to see much of it from the front. But from the back, yeah, there you go. It's sticking out quite far, though. It looks a little weird. But it does clear the short sword. And so then, if we open that up. It looks like you could fly, kind of, sort of. I wonder if it does in that SD cartoon. So that's something you can do. Now, also, I'm looking at the box, and you can put those weapons up in these peg holes with these little adapters. So possibly, you know, maybe in the cartoon, this thing is a remote-controlled friend or just a sentient friend that comes along and like drops off weapons. Uh, let's see if I pose this this way. Actually, I can probably get the gun to... Right, so it's like coming around and chopping people's heads off or delivering some weapons to, to Musha there. So I guess that's kind of neat that it gives you those options. And then the last bit I'm assuming is you can put Maybe this thing on the character in the open position. That's one. Because what else would this... This is the last piece we haven't used yet. So that can go in there. It's interesting. There's two pegs. Hmm. in there. Maybe you can use this uh, to offset the thing like that. And it collapse the things. Peg that in up there. Alright, I think I'm onto something. Oh boy, but now the head is so wide. It is doable. So it's kind of like a parrot, you know, like a parrot on a pirate's shoulder. Yeah, I just wish it stuck out a little bit more and up. Like, I wish it was more, oh, best face, like here, you know, that would be cool. Oh well. Uh, well, you could actually mount it like this as well, off to the side. Kind of like that. So that works. Kind of, sort of, right? Yeah, some play factor going on with all these little bits. So then I'll just, what was this? Maybe I'll put this on this side so I can see the parrot or whatever that bird like thing is. I'm calling it a parrot now. This gun doesn't block the view so much. There you go, all maxed out. I suppose you could store this up in here for some odd reason. An empty scabbard. Oh, it's very loose. No, nope, that's not going to work. 
but there's still a peg hole here. That's kind of, that's very loose also. So, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, just seeing if I could. So there's a square hole here, so I guess you could put the sword maybe? No, no you cannot, but you can put the sword in here. Yeah, the only thing I can't reliably put on is this little scabbard, it's too, too loose. Now one last thing I guess I'm going to try is taking the wings off and just see what that looks like. Hmm. Still looks like a creature of some sort. Yeah, it's got little black triangles for, for eyes. Interesting. And then you could play around with these on the bottom I guess. Let's try that. It's nice that there's details there. I didn't even notice that at the bottom of these wings. So we can do that. Or, I'm not sure why, but let's we'll see if I'm in here. Okay. Well, it still looks like a weird creature. creature with a sword, <laughs> and uh, what's that other beast, and a weird creature with a gun. Alright, so yeah, that could be a funky support friend vehicle. Alright, let me get this back to a more normal thing. I'm just going to throw out some random ones because this is pretty a, a random uh, Converge figure. So turn X, this is number 100 in the line of Converge. Uh, number 276 in Converge is Berga Giros in the purple-gray scheme. There is a black and metallic purple scheme, but I don't think I have it yet. I'm not sure if I'll ever get it. It's the same identical mold. So, And then Shining uh, Gundam is 246. Turnex is so crazy. This actually has some like samurai helmet kind of motifs going on. And I kind of get a Japanese vibe out of that as well. Let's hit this thing on its own. This deserves a spin on it. It's own coaster. Let me get the camera really close here. So, besides the fact that it looks like a samurai, which I think is awesome, this is the best case of playability I have so far run across in my Converge collection. And uh, I've probably reviewed at least 50 Converges, if not, no, I'm, I'm guessing maybe 100 Converge figures now. Uh, so, this is a case where everything is a round peg, and so you can rotate the thing, you can swap out other things, because you know, all the pegs are almost the same size, except for that one scabbard. So I really wish Fusion Works would just standardize on like one peg size, and make all their pegs round. So then you could s start swapping parts to other Converge figures, or just having the you know, luxury of being able to rotate it just to see what it looks like. Even if, though it doesn't look, you know, like it should. These are toys, right? It's funny that I'm a grown man talking about I want more playability. But I figure why not? It doesn't cost any more to do to make a round peg versus a square peg. So I'm always complaining about square pegs and weird shaped pegs in my Converge videos. But that not today. So this is a highlight in my collection. A, because it looks awesome, but B, you can actually play around with it and just see what it can do. Alright, well, hopefully uh, there'll be other ones as good as this. 
and uh, hopefully you'll be around to, to watch them. Thanks, take care, bye.